Support for this podcast comes from Neon presenting Parasite, a film that the New York Times called the movie of the year. Featured on over 100 top 10 lists, Parasite is nominated for a Screen Actors Guild Award, seven Critics' Choice Awards, and three Golden Globe Awards. Visit neonguilds.com to find screenings. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Awards Watch Oscar podcast. I'm your host, Eric Anderson, as usual, and this is a Golden Globes podcast. And today I have with me returning guest, returning champion, Kyle Buchanan, the carpetbagger at the New York Times. Hello, Kyle. Thanks for having me. I am really glad to have you back on here. We're sort of in the, the gray area between the holidays and... It's it's kind of a bit of a doldrum, but we're going to talk Golden Globes. Okay. Is it doldrums? <laughs> it, it, Somebody it, better tell my workload. Oh, okay. Yes, that's true. That's that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. With uh, you know, all of the year-end <laughs> movies coming out, there's still a ton to write and uh, box office to watch, and everybody is whispering to everybody about everything. So it's it's kind of a fruitful time, even though. This is supposed to be a uh, vacation. It hasn't quite felt like that yet. Yeah, and on top of that, it's the end of a decade, so we're getting all of the end of decade lists and ideas from yeah. left and right. And yeah, maybe not doldrums after all. Yeah, yeah, astonishing that people made those best of lists without having seen cats yet. But e- exactly. Now it's... that they have, <laughs> time to start revising. Much like cats itself. These lists will have to be re-edited for accuracy. Mm-hmm. Yes. And speaking of cats and the globes, I, I guess I'm a little bit surprised they, they didn't have a little more fun with it. I, I, I kind of thought that they might. What, what? Yeah, the, uh, the globes have historically been very welcoming to musicals, no matter uh, how good or bad they are, um, which cats is both. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah, I had I, I, what I had heard is that you know obviously Cats was barely finished in time, and whether it even did get finished is arguable. Um, but uh, a screening was set very late, and not everybody from the HFPA was able to go to it. Still, yeah, uh, a sort of startling omission given that it did get at least one nomination with uh, the original song for Taylor Swift song. Yeah, uh, not that we'll see that at the Oscars. I know that's that is it's not the, the the turn that I expected this to take. Not not at all. Yeah, but I love some good twists and turns. Though. Yes, I think there's a few uh, with the Globes too that are that are kind of interesting, like Marriage Story leading nominations, but then Noah Baumbach being snubbed. So it's there's I think there's yeah, a, a lot of room for for weird things to happen i don't even think that's all that weird that's something that i think we see more and more uh with a lot of award shows sometimes even the oscars when it comes to somebody who's directing something that is mostly considered to be a screenplay achievement um obviously there's so much more that went into marriage story it's just that we've entered this phase i feel like in the last 15 years where best director tends to be a reward for like an audacious technical achievement, or at least a sort of a tourism that makes itself known more than his does. Um, you know, uh, Kenneth Lonergan uh, didn't always get nominated for Best Director when Manchester by the Sea was picking mm-hmm. up awards, and and I think Noah Baumbach might be facing the same fate. I think you're I think you're absolutely right, especially when you look at this lineup and. And it's and best director is is kind of turned into a little bit of like most director, like right. cinematography and editing uh, awards and categories have have done a little bit of that, a little bit. Yeah, there's there's always yeah, some but exceptions. It, it definitely swings more towards technical achievements, and I think often when you see the picture and director split, which we've seen so much of over the last few years, it's because they're rewarding a major technical achievement in best director. 
Well, then what about when you have a situation and we have a few of those this season uh, where the director is also the screenwriter and they are both in a lot of ways equally regarded uh, successes? Because we've got like... What's like an Bong, example of that? Well, like Bong Joon-ho and Quentin Tarantino, I think, are are two examples of writer-directors who whose work is, uh, it's like inextricable to to separate the two. No, you're, you're right in Tarantino's case, I think, uh, because he's only ever won the screenplay award and never best director or best picture, which is the case that they're going to be making to voters that it's time for this person who's, you know, uh, or we're talking about Oscars, not Golden Globes. Yes. Uh, but, uh, you know, they're, they're making the case that it's time given that he's, you know, allegedly not going to direct very many more movies. And he's sort of given them something that feels like it was made exactly for Hollywood and the Oscars and this sort of voting body. Who knows if he will again, or if he'll just make another bloody Western. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, in the case of Bong Joon-ho, I think it's being regarded as a directorial achievement, though the screenplay um, is... It, uh, you know, the, the path to best picture uh, runs so often through screenplay. So considering mm -hmm. that is regarded so strongly, um, I think that's uh, that's all to the good for him. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. And just kind of looking at what the, the Critics Awards have kind of gone to. And Parasite's doing OK. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is doing OK. But like Marriage Story and Little Women have done better than both. Yes. So it's it's an interesting yeah thing. So Kyle, you were talking about the era of picture director splits, and and it's certainly more common. And sticking with with Bong Joon Ho and and Quentin Tarantino in this part of the conversation, are you are you thinking that we're on a path for that here, or that are these just two guys that are going to run it. I think there are three guys that we need to be keeping in mind, Bong, Tarantino, and Scorsese. Okay. Um, uh, ultimately, when it comes to the Oscars, you know, a lot can change between here and there. Um, certainly all the signs are, are sterling for Parasite after it did so well at uh, SAG, picking up that cast nomination. That really made me think that this film could go all the way, uh, potentially to picture or director. Um, if sort of recent trends hold, uh, director is the place where they would probably recognize it if there were a split. Um, director, they again, it's a, a sort of audacious technical achievement, maybe arguably more so than what Scorsese and Tarantino have delivered. Um, you know, it's so tight, it's so perfectly uh, framed and, and storyboarded and clever. Um, and uh, Best Director often goes very international. Um, so I can see an outcome where Bong wins director and then uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood or Irishman takes Best Picture. I could also maybe see an outcome where Parasite takes both. Um, it's kind of exciting that we have, I think, three very, very strong movies in the mix this year from major a-list directors no uh no peter Farrelly in the bunch exactly and i think that's the exact scenario that uh the golden globes look like too because obviously since parasite can't compete against once upon a time or the irishman but just in its own foreign language film category we could see each yeah. one of those winning their respective categories and most likely will and then, right. I mean, I assume I assume your listeners know why that is, which is the Golden Globes yes. have a dumb, outdated rule that if it is a foreign language film, it can't be for best director or, or uh, for uh, best drama or best comedy musical. That seems really stupid to me. And uh, you know, I mean, listen, we all know what's up. We all know that the Golden Globes are um, the sort of thing you put an asterisk by. Um, but it never hurts to be seen winning, and they do have influence. And at this point, I'm kind of confused as to why people haven't mounted more of a, you know, um, a crusade against them to get them to change that rule, which is 
you know, hemming in a lot of the movies, especially recently with Roma and Parasite mm-hmm. and um, The Farewell that ought to be contending in different ways. Absolutely. I think one of the, the only good rules that they do have in place with that is that they're not beholden to uh, a country's submission in, you know, like the, like the Oscars are. We had we right. two movies from France nominated uh, at the Globes. And then, as we know, The Farewell is nominated in foreign language film as well because that is the only place it was eligible in those top two categories. But I'm glad that you did bring that up because even in talking about it on Twitter with people, you know, if, if it's not people like us that are just deep into it at our bone level there's there's a lot of confusion there's a lot of frustration uh as to to why there are these seemingly nonsense rules of eligibility so yeah and they are nonsense they really are (laughs) but you know (laughs) when we when we do what we do you encounter a lot of nonsense so you have to be able to parse that definitely it's it's takes expert navigation and or dodging <laughs> to be able to avoid that. We kind of went right up, to, right at the top with with the directors and and I kind of want to look at if well he, for for the Oscars, not for the Globes. Yeah, yeah but all right. Let, then let's. Then Do you want to talk about Globes? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. No, let's let's. I want to talk about the Globes because they're just in okay. a couple of days, and 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 I and I think people are going to want to hear what we, or at least you, have to. <laughs> <laughs> have to say about it. Um, I'm I'm putting together my my predictions and looking at at things, and you know it's it's often a show that you know you might see only uh, a single win from a movie. And I'm just looking at like right at the top, best motion picture drama at 1917, The Irishman, Joker, Marriage Story, and The Two Popes, and it almost feels like. Irishman would be able to win this and maybe nothing else. Uh, that's very possible. Um, yeah, it's uh, there's three Netflix movies nominated. I mean, it was the Golden Globes were sort of a dream scenario for Netflix this year. Yes. Uh, but if you look over the other categories, you know, where is Netflix going to score? Mm-hmm. Uh, Laura Dern probably in supporting actress. Yeah. But where else, you know, is it going to take one of those top prizes? If if Netflix is having such a great year, uh, does it go to Irishman? Could it also go to Popes, which is very <laughs> Golden Globesy, you know, it and is. throw a wrench in the works there? It Honestly, is. the thing about best drama is I can make a case for Golden Globes logic for yeah. almost, I guess, honestly, all five of these nominees. Yeah. They, they, each of them has something else to back up the idea of, of it winning. Right. If this were the Oscars and you gave me those five, I would say Irishman. But this isn't the Oscars. This is the Golden Globes. <laughs> um, you know, Irishman, obviously, that's it's a very respectable choice. It's done well with uh, critics groups, Martin Scorsese, um, who they've given Golden Globes to, although um, Hugo didn't win. The last time they gave him Best Director... Yeah. Hugo, I think, fell to the descendants. Um, so it's not an automatic rubber stamp for a Scorsese. Um, Marriage Story, obviously, it led the Globes. Um, so they like it. Yeah. Uh, 1917, I think the Golden Globes like to feel like, you know, that there is a recency bias, as we know, with the Globes, especially in television. Mm-hmm. Um, they were one of the first groups to see 1917. It's one of the latest movies. If they gave that their cosign, it would be major. And we'd always associate that film with the Globes, which I think they'd appreciate. Joker, well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can't you just see an outcome where Joker wins the Golden Globes and we're all like, okay, you it, know? I, I, I almost, think I, I could absolutely see it in, in a totally like trolling kind of way. Yes. Yes. But it's hard. Um, it's hard movie, to. That movie will continue to troll us all season in yes. some fashion. So why not here? Yes. And it um, did really well here. So I, I can't. Yes. I can't side eye the fact that it's as much a contender as anything else. Todd Phillips is nominated. We can't underestimate the notion that Joker could win Best Drama. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And then there's the two popes, which again, feels like a very, very globesy kind of choice. And I mean, I kind of dispute the notion that this film should be in drama. It should have been in comedy, in my opinion. That movie is cut like a comedy. It's got jokes. Yep. It, the very last scene it has a post credit scene that's just comedy. <laughs> it's a comedy. Yeah. Like it has dramatic elements, but it's a comedy. I, um, I agree. I don't know if that's going to really hurt it in that in that category. Certainly, it gets it out of the way of the Tarantino film uh, in comedy, but. Yeah, that's questionable to me. It is, but at the same time, it was pretty brazen to to do that and not to to just kind of split it and 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 hope that that everything gets in because they still got everything in and Dolomite yeah. over on the other side. So yeah, if it's just about getting everything in, they got everything in. Yeah, it's it's commendable, I guess, in in those terms. <laughs> um, speaking of joker and marriage story i want to take a look at at uh, best actor drama because yeah i think we're i think we're looking at adam driver versus joaquin phoenix which seems to be the the narrative of the season anyway and certainly in this category yeah 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 when we've also got Um, christian bale antonio banderas and jonathan price but i mean it all does feel like a little bit of also rams well, so let me ask you, who do you think is going to win that? <laughs> um, I, I feel like it will still be Adam Driver. Do you? I, I think he's still gonna... Adam Driver. What do you mean? Like you I, think he's I, the unshakable frontrunner? I do think he's the frontrunner, yeah. Although uh-huh. it, I, there is, I can't deny that, that Phoenix comes in with multiple nominations and this huge, insane, and transformative performance. Yes, I don't think you should deny those things, because those I'm, are things that I'm not. often they, win awards. They're right there. Um, and, and I, I, I think it will be Joaquin. Okay. I think Joaquin, uh, you know, when you talk to Oscar voters, uh, when you talk to Golden Globe voters, or try to, um, <laughs> they always talk about transformative performances. It's the most broken record, but yeah. I truly can't emphasize enough. Anytime you're talking to voters about these sorts of things, if you have a big transformative performance uh, up against what Adam is doing, which is wonderful, but he's playing like a contemporary you know, director uh, who lives in New York. He's wearing clothes that you might think Adam Driver would wear, and his hair is <laughs> at normal Adam Driver length. Yes. These things obviously, obviously don't get in the way of the performance, but they do get in the way of a head-to-head matchup where voters, in, in you know, uh, the ones I've spoken to at least, will always go with the more transformative performance. That's obviously Joaquin... Joaquin's shoulder blades are a co-star in Joker. Um, it's one of those movies where they're like, he lost all the weight and will never let you forget it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just looks, it's so physically taxing. Um, this is less of a narrative than the Golden Globes, but I do think there's a potent Oscar narrative that he has never won an Oscar, though he's considered to be one of the best, if not the best actors of his generation. He's revered by his fellow actors um, I think that when you look at Rami Malek winning Best Actor last year, you're going to tell me Adam Driver's going to beat what Joaquin is doing? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Oscar, they, they are never forget that they are suckers for a transformation. Yeah, and, you know, a, a billion dollar hit. So that's. Yeah, and, and with the Globes, it's nominated for Best Director as well. I mean, I would be thrilled if Adam Driver won. I think he's phenomenal in that film i just sort of gird myself because yeah i I can't i cannot emphasize enough that's why i keep saying it (laughs) you talk to voters all they ever talk about is transformation yeah which you know if if we're if we're sagging into best actress in a drama that's why renee zellweger has this like lockstep always has dominating unchallenged it is her and and that i've 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 firmly believed in as well. I have, I haven't shaken yeah. from that one single bit. 
Yeah, obviously Charlize, what she's doing is physically transformative as well with those prosthetics. But are you going to vote for Judy Garland or are you going to vote for Megyn Kelly? You know, it's it's again a head to head matchup where Renee comes out singing. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah, no, and I and I and I think that that is part of the narrative too. Outside of performance, is is the the idea of being able to sort of reward Judy Garland as well. Yes. Since it never happened to her when she was alive. Yes. So, yeah, that that makes I I perfect sense. And every time you know I talk to you, you, you come out with knowledge and logic that I go, okay, Eric, what are you doing? This is obviously correct. <laughs> no, and, well, um, and, I'm, I'm, I'm also often wrong. <laughs> but, knowledge I mean, and logic can take you, uh, you know, a long <laughs> ways, but they don't always take you to the end of the line. No, so. it's, I, th I think you're, I think you're much closer to, to write about Phoenix than I am about driver. I don't have as, as I don't have a, a, a narrative push behind my reason that is as strong as, as, as yours. And it makes perfect sense. So well, I hope Brennan Rifkin, his publicist is not listening to this because I'm in the middle of profiling Adam, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sort of surprised that, that mo so many pundits think that Adam could win this, not because the performance isn't incredible, but because of what we know about how those voters vote. Yeah, and I, I think too, in general, I, my my thoughts on on the strength of Marriage Story have have weakened over the last few weeks. Uh, Why is that? A bit. Um, Just your thoughts on how much you responded to it. Oh no, no, I love it. Awards it. You think I love it. Just, 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 just awards. I, I, I had it much. I mean, I had it winning for a while. It's uh, I've, I've had oh, really? it. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. So it's it, but you know that was a month ago, and you know even two weeks can make a a lot of difference. Yes, so. it can. Fascinating how it's been memed to death online. I never would have expected that fate for Marriage Story. It, it's but, uh, it's bizarre yeah. because it's it's yeah that totally struck me. Because it's not a movie yeah. that is has been widely seen in the way that you know something else would be memeable. Well, but once it once it hit Netflix, it was widely seen and yes. easily memeable. I just didn't think because of the sort of movie it was that it lent itself to that. But I guess I overlooked the fact that anything having to do with Scarlett Johansson or Adam Driver <laughs> is a guaranteed conversation starter on social media. So why shouldn't? A big fight between the two become a meme. That's absolutely true. And sometimes, you know, the 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 meme creation totally transcends, you know, whatever the original content is. Anyway, the whole uh, Real Housewives cat meme is completely outside <laughs> of the show. It's it's you can put it to anything. Uh, so I yes. think I think that's kind of what happened. But there's there's a weird thing I think that can happen with this kind of thing is that. I, I'm not saying that that's, that voters would see it and be like, well, obviously I can't vote for this because everybody's making fun of it. But maybe there's a tinge no, of that? they have no idea, especially Golden Globe voters. Not at all. Are you kidding? Yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> well, Oscar <laughs> voters never do, too. I mean, you know, I think people think what they're seeing on social media or those bubbles or those backlashes yeah. matter, and they just never do. I mean, this is what I... Uh, it's something I've always known from talking to people, but it just really got hit home last year. Yes. When I would go to, you know, the DGAs or the PGAs or whatever um, and talk to the people at my table about what they were, you know, voting for, excited about. And they would say Green Book. And they wouldn't say it like, honestly, I know you're going to kill me, but it's Green Book. <laughs> they would say Green Book um, enthusiastically, like, obviously, Green Book. They didn't know that that was, you know, the kiss of death to say online, nor did mm -hmm. they care. It's just the movie that they liked and loved. No, absolutely. And, and you're completely correct that the idea that, that the controversies or whatever they were from last year were going to have any actual impact because it, they weren't moving in the same circles. Yeah. So... And there's there's certainly and at this at the same time, I don't think anything after last year 
could even upset anything now. I can't even mm -hmm. imagine what it would take, what type of, of controversy it would take to absolutely ruin a person or a film's chances. It's odd. We'll see. When it's, it I used mean, to I be think, so simple. Yeah, I think if there's a really <laughs> awful sort of Me Too scandal, that's the sort of thing that can torpedo someone. But but people online just not liking a movie yes. or finding it to be retrograde in his thinking. Yeah. Well, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> movies are that way. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes movies are 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 crude and uh, manipulative, and that's what people respond to. Yes, I exactly, especially voters. Uh, all right, let's look at let's look at some of the other acting categories since we've kind of nailed down those lead drama categories. I actually, really want to look at supporting. Because we've yes. seen now Tom Hanks, Al Pacino, Joe Pesci, and Brad Pitt kind of run the nominations. They've, they've gotten everything so far. All we have left is BAFTA to give us that final little little piece. And I'm, I, I feel really good about Brad Pitt being able to, to run it. Um, what what are your thoughts? You know, and I know that the Golden Globes are star fuckers. So <laughs> the fact that they can give Brad Pitt a Golden Globe and it's like condoned, and he might win all season, and they can kick that off, they'll <laughs> fucking love that. Um, I think the question is uh, how how will Brad Pitt adapt to having to go up and give so many speeches all season because awards. He has a very uneasy relationship with them. I mean, he has uh, produced or appeared in so many of the recent films that won Best Picture, but he doesn't even always go to the Oscars. He wasn't at the Oscars when Moonlight, a film that his company Plan B produced, won yeah. Best Picture. Yeah. Um, you know, he's... Uh, so it, it, it'll be interesting to see him forced to take the stage so often. I, I wonder... Uh, Less about whether he will win and more about the increasing brevity of his speeches as the season goes on. Yeah, you, you said the exact word that I was going to say. I feel like he's going to be probably very short in, in his speeches. It's, and then I, I keep thinking about when he appeared at the Globes a few years ago. Like I think it was pretty recently after uh, his separation with Angelina Jolie and the response to him was so huge and positive and embracing. So I think not only are voters, you know, from the Globes going to want to see this, but his peers want to see this too. Yeah. So it's, it yes. seems, it seems pretty easy. It feels right. Again, it's not dissimilar to the Tarantino narrative for mm -hmm. the Oscars, which is, don't you think he deserves an Oscar for like, you know, being, incredibly famous and consistent and uh, one of our best guys. Um, so the idea that Brad Pitt doesn't have an acting Oscar is something that voters will be pleased to rectify. And we'll see if that, you know, uh, extends to his director as well. And there are plenty of people who don't realize that Brad Pitt is an Oscar winner because he's so associated with, with acting and not producing. So, for a lot of people, it's it's a you kind of have to remind them that yeah he is a winner, but it's not quite the same. And so over in supporting actress, though, is it's a little different. We've got a wider breakdown between like Globes and SAG and even Critics Choice, but the the three that are that are sticking to it are Laura Dern, Jennifer Lopez, and Margot Robbie. But, yeah, I mean, I, I envision Laura Dern having a somewhat pit-like uh, march through award season. It strikes me that we could have a somewhat boring uh, season when it comes to the acting races because there's a very real possibility that Pitt, Dern, and Zellweger could just sort of sweep the entire season. And if you're inclined to my way of thinking, Phoenix could be among them as well. Um, if there's any place where I think Dern could fall, it's probably the Golden Globes, just because Jennifer Lopez winning would be so chic, so yep. fun, so everybody would be into that. Uh, the Golden Globes are no stranger to, to delivering a supporting actress upset. Um, 
And I think they might regard Laura Dern as more Oscar affiliated, given how much, you know, she's a, a sort of an Academy stalwart. So there's no doubt in my mind that Laura Dern will win the Oscar, given all of those things. But the Golden Globes, there's room. There's room for J-Lo. Who knows? I think so, too. I, I totally agree. I, I imagine her, uh, Lopez, being able to win this, not easily, but absolutely being able to do it. And well, I'd, I'd feel better about it if Hustlers had gotten like anything else from yeah. the Globes. You know, uh, Marriage Story is the nomination leader. So when I say that this is the only shot that J-Lo has at knocking off Laura Dern, I don't think it's a strong shot. Yeah. I'm just saying that there's a little more room here than there will be the rest of the season. Certainly if Dern wins here, it's just going to be, you know, coronation after coronation. Yeah, I, I think that's absolutely correct. If If Dern can win here, then... There's, there's really, that's nothing that's going to stop her at that point. Yeah. I know a lot of people want Jennifer Lopez to win and, and really adore her performance and really love the idea of her at this stage of her career being, being in the place that she's in. So she's going to have a pretty awesome first few months of this year, of the, of the year. Yeah. I hate that this is coming down to. Um, a gay war between Jennifer Lopez and Laura Dern. Like, <laughs> can, can we celebrate the idea of that instead of having to divide into factions and, you know, uh, and tear the other woman down? It's amazing that we have uh, a Dern versus Lopez contest. Let's celebrate that. I completely agree. Every time I see, like, you know, th- these factions of, of of people that are you know only one and they're just ride or die and and to the point of just denigrating the other i'm I'm just looking at both of these going how great is this how awesome yeah no it's it's weird i mean this is uh this is a thing that happens i'm i'm noticing it with the democratic primary as well where once you've picked your favorite uh it's it's all about sort of tearing down the others and you know we see that with pop stars you know if you love gaga mm-hmm. then you've got to tear down madonna yeah but let's yeah let's please not do that with laura Dern and jennifer lopez i beg of you i know My if we if we leave this season and everybody's suddenly fucking down on laura dern a <laughs> gift to us all if they're pissed that laura dern won if laura dern becomes this like pejorative icon of white feminism i'll just i will quit I know. Come on, it's Laura Dern. Let's not do this. Yeah, exactly. Goodness. I'm I'm beside myself just thinking about it now. Well, I also think Laura Dern is fantastic in the film, and I'm already noticing this sort of, um, I don't want to necessarily say backlash, but people being like, she's going to win for this, or yeah. like, you know, it's too much like Renata, or blah, blah, blah. I think that's the sort of thing you only see when something starts to become the front runner, and mm-hmm. then you know it's it's not hip to support it. But I think she's fabulous in Marriage Story, and I think given how you know Big Little Lies two was really her season. I mean, they she really just went for broke. It's uh, a testament to her that she can play a character that might superficially seem similar to Renata from that show, in that you know she's an incredibly wealthy uh, titan of industry. But she's playing her so differently. The voice, the posture, the confidence, everything about that character is completely different, specific choices about that woman. And for people to conflate those two performances in an attempt to say that she should win the Oscar for Marriage Story, she's wonderful in that movie. She gives it so much zip, so much pep. Uh, She nails all of her scenes. Um, I think she absolutely does deserve it. Stupid that people would not think that that's going to be one of her iconic performances of her career. I completely agree, and I think the comparisons with Renata are so amazingly lazy because they are not the the same in in any way. Uh, it's just yeah. not, not even in 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 the slightest way. In Marriage Story, she is tempered and calm and careful and deliberate. And it's how she gets what she wants. And, you know, in Big Little Lies, Renata is screamy and crazy and wild and over the top. And it's, I mean, it's just bizarre that, that people can do that. And it's, you know, I, like you said, I, I do think that it is kind of looking at it like, okay, she's the front runner. What can I do to, <laughs> to, yeah. to damage this idea? 
when the answer is nothing, you can do nothing. <laughs> um, what about over in the, the comedy categories in actress and, and actor? It's, it's a bit of a funky bunch and yeah. Uh, let's, let's, I mean, actor, actor, yeah. that's between Leo and Taryn, I think. Yeah, I think um, so too. Uh, <laughs> would the Globes be so audacious as to give it to Taryn over Leo? Um, that's the excitement factor for me. Yes. Um, uh, I've talked about this a ton, but nobody is campaigning harder than Taryn. Mm -hmm. He is up against, uh, not just in comedy, but in drama generally with SAG and the, the other contenders for Best Actor for Oscar. He is up against an unusually reticent field of men who don't want to shake hands, do events and Q and A's, you know, walking yes. Phoenix to the Adam driver that doesn't come naturally to them, you know, working a party, um, people like Antonio Banderas, it does. He's not here though. Um, uh, and then you have people like Christian Bale or Leo, they're not out there doing a ton. So Taryn, who is, you know, he's done everything right as far as keeping his performance um, in the forefront of voters' minds. He does not stop. I just got another email about another event with him and Elton John. And, you know, <laughs> work it. Sure, mm -hmm. go ahead. Um, I'm reminded of, uh, they did a, an event at the Chateau Marmont, what, like a month or uh, a month and a half ago? Um which was, you know, again, allegedly tied to Rocket Man's home video release, but it was just another awards thing. Yeah. And they had a birthday cake for Taryn. Uh, Dexter Fletcher, who directed the movie, was like, Taryn is out here, camp er, not campaigning, <laughs> but out here meeting you all and yes. you know, supporting the film on his birthday. Can you believe that? <laughs> uh, the crowd was exhorted to sing happy birthday to Taryn. And I took pictures and videos of it. And as I was about to post them, I was like, let me just make sure. So I Googled Taryn Edgerton birthday, and it wasn't for another two weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the kind of campaigning he's doing. I don't doubt that on his actual birthday, he would have campaigned. <laughs> but the narrative there is that, like, you know, uh, compared to these other, you know, snotty, aloof actors, I'm not saying they are, I'm just saying that's the narrative. Um, Taryn is friendly and wonderful and will take a selfie with you and worked really hard, um, not just campaigning, but on that movie. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Leo is not doing those things. Yeah. Leo is sliding in occasionally to a party, but doing. he's done more to support Martin Scorsese and uh, introducing him and giving speeches for him than he has for Once Upon a Time. Yes. Yeah. And and I, I think, too, any time that, that this is uh, the awards and voting period, people that are voting for people like to be able to support somebody that really wants it, too. It's not a total necessity, but when somebody as, is, is like Taryn Edgerton, Kind of in the way that like Eddie Redmayne was a few years ago, just in in a very I'm so happy to be here kind of way, and it's it's yeah. it's engaging, and it's it's very honest, and and I think people just really respond to that. So I I can yeah. absolutely see him uh, winning over DiCaprio here. Yeah, Eddie Redmayne, Brie Larson, um, Taryn Edgerton, they're people who will absolutely be friendly and talk to you. Rami Malek was the same way last year. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to come up and talk to him, he absolutely would. Pull his string, he'll give you a Bohemian Rhapsody anecdote. Like, <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> it's part of your job. <laughs> um, and when people like Bradley Cooper last year are acting like pills about it, it's like, just act just pretend mm -hmm. uh even if you're not feeling it that you just made a huge critically acclaimed hit this yeah. is a good thing it's exciting i mean you know it's it's uh, ultimately draining but is it really more draining than five thousand other things you're called upon to do as an actor this is a luxury position to be in where people really love your film um yes you can interact with some total weirdos uh in every voting body but you know it's hollywood uh it's, it's a skill you develop exactly um I mean, yeah yeah 
I mean, it would take my breath away if Leonardo DiCaprio was there sitting, getting snubbed as Taron Edgerton takes the stage, but um, you never know. Yeah, it's, I, I think it could happen. Um, so over in, in Actress, I, I'm not sure if, if, it's, if it's that open or if there's a room for upsets. I feel like Aquafina really should be able to win this. I don't. Um, I mean, maybe. Okay. But I think this is such a weird, eclectic category that it could go five million ways. Okay. I could see Ana de Armas or Beanie Feldstein also taking it. I like that. I like it. I think. I mean, maybe. I, I would love it to be Aquafina. Um, I just don't think it's an open and shut case. You know, the fact that. Um, what, none of these women got nominated by SAG. Um, mm -hmm. The Golden Globes, we know. They do like to know where the wind is blowing. They don't want to be made fun of. They want to make choices that they think are going to lead somewhere. And so Aquafina not getting nominated there, I think there's a little bit of a freedom for them to vote for whoever they like. Um, and they do like Knives Out. And Beanie yes. Feldstein, you know, I don't know. They, they, they might support that just because of... Uh, the whole book smart situation. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 if I had to put money down, I would say it's going to be Aquafina or Ana de Armas. I think there's a great way to anoint somebody like Ana de Armas because she's going to have such a stellar year. She'll have James Bond movies. She'll have her Marilyn Monroe movie. And it would be a very globesy thing to do to be able to feel like they're kind of getting ahead, out ahead of this and... and and anointing her, I, so I can I can absolutely see that happening, but also too. No, Matt, and she's so good in that film. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm curious about her next year. I, I don't think the Bond role is so big, and I've heard um, some interesting things about the Marilyn Monroe. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, she's she's fabulous, and um, they like that movie, and she's so winning in it. So who knows? You you mentioned uh, Booksmart and and. Beanie Feldstein, and I, it's it might seem like a like a hard left turn, but one of the things that, that came out of the the Golden Globe nominations was the again lack of of female representation in the writing and the directing categories, and it it came from a lot of the backlash came from female directors themselves, not just you know film Twitter trying to make a stink. And then the response from the HFPA president was, you know, we vote on the films. And which I, you know, I'm sure that's the thing that he needs to say and, and wants to say. But it's, it's, it's pretty clear from past decisions that that is not always the case. Do you think that we are, we were just in a situation that even though we have so many fantastic female directed films that it just wasn't enough? Because sometimes I feel like voters have to coalesce around a single female choice instead of right. being able to look at everything for what it is. Well, what we described earlier as the trend that's affecting Best Director, where it becomes about audacious technical auteurism, is something that I don't think benefits the female directors in the race at this point. You know, because they have mostly made very human-sized uh, dramas or comedies, and that's not considered to be uh, enough of a technical achievement to get people's attention and best director. I mean, even what Noah Baumbach is doing, which is more in line with, you know, a Marielle Heller or a Lulu Wong, um, did not get a best director nomination. And I think it's, um, you know, it's a catch-22 because the movies that have the budgets, that have the largesse to let a female director really, you know, make a visual statement, the kind that would catch these voters' eyes, well, they don't often get those sorts of movies, mm -hmm. you know? Um, when they do, it's a Marvel movie. It's not an awards film. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a tricky situation. I think that has a lot to do with it. I think that's why they overlooked Greta Gerwig. Mm -hmm. I think that... Um, I think that when you, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. Um, it, it really is, because some of my favorite films of the last few years, especially last year, mm -hmm. my two favorite films were directed by women. Um, uh, Leave No Trace and The Writer, and totally overlooked by The Globes. 
yeah. this sort of, you know, small, modest, human-driven movie that just does not seem to catch a best director's, a best director branch or, or the HFPA's attention. No, I think, I think you're exactly right. I think, I, I think you, you, you nailed that is, is, yeah. is that, that recent trend. Okay, let's take a look at <laughs> foreign language film, which, you know, I, I, I think it seems like it has a pretty clear direction. But like we mentioned earlier, one of the, the good things about the Globes is that they don't have the same rule as the Oscars of, of what they can nominate. You still have to be submitted, but you don't have to be, you know, one movie per country. So we have Portrait of a Lady, Parasite, Pain and Glory, Les Miserables, and The Farewell here. That's and a really wonderful category, even if I question some of the decision-making as far as, you know, their foreign language rules. Um, I'm, I'm happy to see Portrait of a Lady on fire there. It's wonderful. That's one of my favorite films of the year. Um, Me too. But all these films are just going to be honored to lose to Parasite. It, it, it is, and that's it, it is just how it will have to be. But yeah, I agree. I love this category. And this is actually the only top category that does have female representation behind it as Portrait of a Lady on Fire and The Farewell are both female written directed films. Mm -hmm. But it is a really good category. It's, it might be, I'm looking at everything collectively, it might be my, my favorite because I, I would easily have all of these in my, my top 10 and top 20. Yeah, it's uh, good... four of these five are in my top 10 yeah so it, yeah it's a good category but yes i think i think we can say congratulations to parasite though <laughs> yeah for yeah all right i think that's a good place to wrap for now kyle and i am so so glad to have had you back on the show and 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 I'm really really happy to talk to you again of course anytime all right thanks everybody for listening Bye bye